When I first met Shane, he was clean cut, professional, sharp as a tack, someone that you wanted to be around. But now, he's more drunk than he is sober. I want to drink all the time. And it sucks. It's terrible. Shane is sloppy. No one wants to be around him. He is buying vodka by the half gallon. Within a few days, the bottle's empty. Every 30 minutes, I need another twig. Just kind of keep me on top of the buzz game. Just last month, he had fallen while he was drinking. They put him in ICU for 10 days due to a brain bleed. In 2018, he had fallen. His face was almost totally black. Since Shane's black and blue incident, he's in a constant state of pity. I've heard him so many times say, this is it, I'm not gonna drink anymore. And the next thing I know, he's back at it. The Dr. Phil Cruz showed up to his house and he was plastered. You're looking a little wobbly. You've been drinking all day? Yeah. The children have been around him while he was severely drunk. The kids are afraid to be around him when he's drinking. Things have gotten so bad with Shane that I asked him, okay, the next step is going to be your funeral. We talked about that while you were laying in a hospital bed. Oh, Lord, I sure don't remember that. I said, you're gonna die. So who do you want as your pallbearers? Where do you want to be buried? What do you want me to tell your children? Because this is it. It's gotten that serious. OK, how long have you known Shane? Uh, about 20 years. 20 years. Mm -hmm. OK, how long has he been in this condition? As far as I know, um, about two and a half years. What do you think caused him to fall off the cliff? Drinking, I think, has caused his marriage to fail. But um, why did he start doing that? I mean, if he was healthy and interesting and vibrant about life, and then all of a sudden he is a falling down, staggering drunk. What caused that to happen? What caused that transition? In your opinion, I'm not asking you to, to play doctor here. I'm just asking you know. I him. feel that he had a high performance job maybe entertaining clients, um, living the great life, you know, the great marriage, the great family, the nice house, the nice boat. And I feel that alcohol was part of that lifestyle and it got a hold of him. It just caught up with him. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and, and did he notice that at the time? Did, oh, no. So he just thought this is just party time. Yeah. Okay. Does he own this or does he blame others for it? No, he owns it. He owns it. He has no idea why, but he's owning it now. Now, he has two children. Yes. And they're 10 and 13. Yes. And he has the right to see them, but only supervised. Right. Okay. Now, he hasn't seen them since February? I believe so. So that's eight months. Mm -hmm. So he has the right to see them. Right. But he hasn't exercised that right. Right. Would you have ever thought that of him? No, never. Now, you say this month he went to the ICU for 10 days and the emergency room for two days. What's his reaction to that? He's in there for 10 days, tubes, things running in and out of his body, trying to keep him alive. At that time, does he at least have a come to Jesus then? Does he say, okay, I'm done, that's it? For a day or two, for okay. a day or two. It lasts a day or two. Three days from the ICU incident, yes, sir. And he looks at himself in the mirror and sees that horrific mask of blood, which is just essentially lividity. I mean, that's just, he, he severed an artery, fell face down. That's how blood pools independent tissues. That's what happens to a corpse. Yes, I know. And so this, but he just didn't die. He did everything but I, die. I know that. Did it scare him? When he looked in the mirror, did that scare I him? I think so. He called me and said, I've got a problem. And it just, I told him, I said, you've got to go to the hospital. When this happened? Yes, when that happened. So he wasn't going to the hospital? No. As it turned out, he had a brain bleed. Mm -hmm. 